Hello, it's the Grape Explorer here. Now I'm going to start this video with a question for you. This Rioja is from 2005. This particular Rioja is from 2008 and this one is from 2015. So here's my question. Is this one better because it's older? Is this one better because it's younger? Or is this one better because it comes from the better vintage? Today we're going to be talking about vintage variations and what that can mean to the wine. And we're also going to be looking at some of the best vintages for the various regions around the world over the last 20 years. So it's an interesting question, isn't it, which wine is better? Uh, there are a number of factors that, of course, influence how good a wine is, but nothing probably plays into that more than the vintage, the year that that wine is produced. And when we're talking about the vintage and how good the year was, we're generally talking about one thing, and that's what the weather was like through the year for that particular region as the grapes were being grown. And there are so many variables when it comes to the vintage uh, that can have such a negative or positive impact on the growing of the grapes in the vineyard. So before I get on to some of the classic regions of the world and some of their best vintages over the last few years, let's have a think about what can influence growing conditions in the vineyard. So for me, weather is the biggest one. You know, um, in the Northern Hemisphere, our, our berries are harvested around August through to October time, you know, you get your bud burst in early spring, then you get your growing of the berries through the summer before they fully ripe and ready to be picked. And during that time, so many things can happen that can affect the vintage. So for example, you know, here in England, we've got quite a cooler temperature, but let's say for example, we had a nice warm spring and that bud burst got off to a really good start. If the temperature then drops in April and May and we end up with some early morning frosts or some hailstorms, it's going to have such a negative impact on the growing of those grapes and it might actually destroy a lot of the crop as well. Similarly, as, it, as we go through the summer, we need to have plenty of nice sunshine to allow those grapes to grow and to ripen. Rain is going to have a big effect on the vintage. You know, too much rain is going to swell the berries. It's going to take away some of the flavors. And that's why picking the grapes can become such an important part of the growing season as well. Get it right, the grapes are going to be preserved and they're going to be just what you want. Get it wrong and you're still susceptible to some of those weather conditions and weather patterns that might actually ruin the grapes. So weather plays such a huge impact on how our vintages are. And the very best vintages are because they had perfect growing conditions throughout that period. Everything did what it needed to do at the right time to allow the berries to develop properly and to give the winemaker something really good to work with. But it's not just weather, of course, that has such an influence. You know, there are other things as well. You could have an outbreak of a vine disease. You know, you could have a pest outbreak in the vineyard. You could suddenly get a swarm of birds come in and eat all the crop. You know, there are so many things that can affect a vintage. But what I've done is I've broken down some of the key regions of the world uh, and taking a look at some of the years that they were particularly good. So if you're out in the shops or you're a collector and you're looking to understand a little bit more about really good years that are available to you, please take this as a guide. Now, please also be advised that the very best grape growers, they do a really good job year in, year out. But these are considered some of the better years for the different regions around the world. And so to start off, we're gonna look at Bordeaux, but specifically the left bank. Now, Bordeaux's best vintages of the last 20 years would be more recently the 2016 and 2015 vintages. 2009 and 2010 are particularly celebrated, as well as 2005 and 2000. So if you're out and about in the shops and you can see Bordeaux vintages from any of those years, they're gonna be a good buy for you, it's something you can enjoy. Next, we're gonna switch over to the right bank of Bordeaux, uh, where the best vintages of the last 20 years are very similar to those of the left bank, of course. Geographically, they're not too far from each other, but 2016, 2015, 2010, uh, very good years along with 2009, 2005 and then for the right bank, different from the left bank here, 1998 was considered a very good year. One of the other important growing regions in France where vintage is considered especially pertinent is in Burgundy. And over the last 20 years, some of their best vintages have been 2016, 2015. So you should be getting a feel here that weather was particularly good in, across France in those years. 2012 and 2010 are celebrated, along with 2009, 2005, 
2002 and 1999. Sticking with France and moving a little bit further south from Burgundy, we're going to head to the Northern Rhone, where over the last 20 years, we can see that 2017 and 16 and 15 were particularly good in the Northern Rhone, as well as 2010, 2009, 2006, 2005 and 2001. So if you're out and about looking for some Northern Rhone, uh, some really nice Syrahs, uh, I would recommend you go for those years. And then creeping ever so slightly south to the Southern Rhone, we find that years like 2016 and 15 were particularly good, 2012 and 2010, as well as 2007, 2005, 2001. Now interestingly, 2007 is known in Bordeaux as being particularly bad. So clearly in that year, you can see that the weather patterns were isolated to different regions of France. The whole country didn't enjoy the same good weather as the year went on. Uh, but So 2007, hunt out those southern moans, your Gigondas, your Vacuras, your Chateauneuf de Paps, they're all going to be really good from that year. Next we're going to move into Spain and the most celebrated region in Spain is Rioja, probably the most well known as well and particularly of interest to me where I've got these three bottles from the start. So 2015 and 2010 were particularly good along with 2009, 2005, 2004 and 2001. So this is interesting, isn't it? Because at the start of the video, I had a 2005, a 2008, and a 2015. So that's not to say, of course, that the 2008 isn't as good. It's just not as celebrated as a vintage in Spain. But I'm really gonna look forward to the 15 and the 05. Now moving over to Italy, to Tuscany. Some of the years that are celebrated in Tuscany are 2007, 2006, 2004 and 2001. So if you're hunting out some really good Chianti, uh, head over to Tuscany in those particular years. Next, we're gonna go all across the Atlantic, all the way over to California to see how good things were in those years. Now, they've got quite a few celebrated years here. California, of course, is known for having pretty consistent weather. They've got celebrated vintages in 2014 and 2013 and 2012, three good years on the trot. Also 2007, 2005, 2004 and 2002. So lots of choice when it comes to California. Uh, prices in California, of course, I think are quite high. Good luck finding something if, with a reasonable rate from those particular years. We're gonna shoot back over to Italy now and specifically to Piedmont. Uh, they have a number of celebrated years. We've got 2016, 2015, 2013, 2011, 2010, 2009, 2008, 2007. So from seven through to 11, they were consistent for five years. And again, they've been consistent in more recent times. Italy clearly enjoying some very good weather, some very good vintages, so definitely some great stuff to hunt out from there. Now we're going to look at another region in France which is slightly cooler in climate and that's Chablis where notoriously vintages are difficult because of early morning frosts that they suffer earlier in the growing season. So from a Chablis perspective, we're looking at 2014 and 2005. And no doubt being able to find either of those years is gonna be quite tricky. Chablis is a smaller area where winemaking takes place and no doubt these wines are gonna be going for a premium. But I think the number of vintages that have been considered really good in the last 20 years just shows you how difficult it can be growing grapes within certain areas and certain climates. Next, we're going to look at another cooler climate area, and that would be Alsace in France. Now, they've enjoyed a few more good vintages in the last few years, including 2017 and 15, 2010, 2009, and 2005. Again, Alsace, things like Riesling, Pinot Gris, Gewürztraminer, you know, these are also going to be going for a premium from this region, but these are some of the years to hunt out. And just across from Alsace, we have Germany, of course, another place that's famous for its Rieslings and its Gewürztraminers. So they've had a few more um, consistent years than some of the neighboring areas have, but Germany's quite a big area, lots of grape growing regions, and actually when you move into more central Europe, you actually find that some of the temperatures do increase as well. So Germany has enjoyed six great vintages in the last 20 years, including 2016 and 15 and 11, 2009, 7 and 5. So lots of good stuff to hunt out for in Germany. I couldn't do a video, of course, without talking a little bit about Champagne. It's another cool climate region, so it does have fewer good vintages. But there have been good vintages in 2012, 2008, 2006 and 2002. And you don't need me to tell you that they're going to be expensive. Most Champagne houses will have done a vintage for that year. 
Now moving out of Europe entirely and going all the way across to the other side of the world, we have Australia. Now Australia, I haven't grouped it by particular regions. I've just given some good indication of when Australia's wine growing regions enjoyed particularly good growing conditions. And these would be found in 2014, 2012, and then 2009, seven, five, four, and two. So be hunting those ones out if you're interested in Australian wine. Finally, I'm gonna talk about port. Uh, and where they've enjoyed really good vintages in the Douro Valley in Portugal. You can find really good ports from the years 2014, 2012, 2009, 7, 5, 4 and 2. So again, lots of really good options when it comes to port. A lot of those are going to be, of course, aged for a number of years before they're released into market. So something to look out for in the future. So I hope this has been something useful to you. You know, I recently got asked for a question, how do I go about selecting wines? And years are definitely something that you look at when you understand that some years are better than others. It does drive your attention to those bottles. But like I said at the start of this video, really good producers are always going to make really good wine. But let me know about where you are, some of the celebrated vintages and perhaps some of the ones that I haven't included on here that you feel were actually really good. Let me know in the comments section below. I'm the Grape Explorer. See you again soon.